Good evening and welcome to the latest episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Lock Fox, and you're tuned in for the uh, weekly look at the market and in-game news for EVE Online uh, all around the YC118.2 release, which, hey Siegel, if you're watching this, please bring back actual release names because I hate calling them this. Let's start where we usually do with some quick show news. Um, not a whole, not a whole lot new on the blog front this week. Uh, last week I did post an article where we went through K162 spaces, uh, data looking for patterns. And if you're at all interested in how I do data science, even though I completely admit I am an amateur, uh, go check that out. Uh, it's supposed to be really informative for people who might not know, uh, what, the order of operations might look like and some useful links on on how to do that if you want to follow the show all you got to remember is eve prosper that's twitch twitter youtube and the blog um we i post rather regularly and if you want to keep up with the show off the air the best place to do that is on the tweet fleet slack invites are in the doobly-doo uh in the links below and then one more quick note before we get started. The show is on the air thanks to our patrons at patreon.com slash eveprosper. Uh, it takes a lot of work to produce the show, and our patrons keep it free and open for everyone and ad-free. And if you can contribute, it is immensely appreciated. So stop by if you can, and if not, be sure to share the uh, this show among all your friends so that you can all get rich and laugh at all the people who don't watch the show. With that... Let's go ahead and start with the news. Um, I'm going to start the news. I wanted to, uh, I didn't get a chance to finish this in the pre-show. Uh, I was having a lot of trouble trying to get it to work. Um, but I am working on a visualization, visualizations around the new skill trading system. This is uh, looking at the cost per skill point uh, since we, since the databases came online, uh, Eve Central was borked thanks to Crest being borked, uh, right at launch, but data is streaming in again. The interesting part here is the white dotted line is the parity line for, uh, when it comes to Plex. Like, I have an account and I am earning almost two million skill points a month. That costs a plex, and this that line represents the uh, price of plex. And we continue to have valuations for injectors above that line. And I had said in all of my forecasts that I believed that we'd be far below that line, and I have been just dead wrong. And um, I'm probably going to write a blog about it once I get the visualizations finished, uh, just to sort of talk about why I made the prediction I made, why I still sort of believe in it, uh, because this, this particular trend is worrying in a long, in a long-term sense. Um, if you can just farm out the skill points at over 100%, and this is just barely over 100%, um, then you can basically, you can get, you can play Eve for free. You can, this, this takes into account the price of, the injector, this, this takes out the, the price of the, uh, extractors and is honestly, you could trade your skill points for plex at this point and break even, which is strange. It's, it's strange to really think about, uh, Eve being truly free to play if you didn't want skill points. I think we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to keep a really close eye on this. I'll have, I think I'm going to put together two or three views on this so that we can track it better over time. And uh, I'll be posting that on the Twitter. So be sure to follow Eve Prosper if you want to get uh, the first look at those. Next, CCP Fozzy is a jerk and <laughs> pushed out all of the uh, March update features, uh, feature discussions this afternoon and was like, GG on Twitter. So thanks again, CCP Fozzy. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot coming, uh, down the pipeline. Uh, there, there were already talks about the fax skill changes and new fighter changes. That's the word. This now, now he's rolled out a whole bunch of new, of new announcements. Uh, the big ones, if we start at the top and work our way down, 
damage controls are being uh, expanded. What's happening is that every ship is basically getting a getting a mini damage control added to their base stats. 33% omni resistance on structure, and then the effectiveness of damage controls is coming down. Um, the hope is that now you can actually talk about not fitting a damage control, which would be apocryphal before this change. Um, warp disruptors and scramblers, the faction and meta version, the higher meta versions are getting extra points added so that, uh, you can, you can, uh, pin down targets that might be warp core stabbed. Sensor dampeners and, uh, sorry, sensor boosters and ECCMs are getting merged together so that uh, if you increase, if you're using a sensor booster, you get an ECCM uh, increase as well. I haven't had a chance to read through all of them yet. Um, if you guys are really interested in uh, a deeper dive, I haven't done that before on the, on the tier side changes yet, um, but we should be able to start talking about those on Monday. I wish I had some advice for you guys going into the weekend, but this was too hot, too fast to really, uh, to really get to you guys this week. So, Maya culpa. Um, and then last for our news, CSM season continues. Uh, the registration period has ended. So, if you were thinking of running for CSM, uh, I sure hope you got your candidacy in the, uh, in the pipeline already. Uh, CSM watch interviews continue and they were featured in the launcher today, which is excellent for them. Um, the, we haven't done a analysis show yet this week, but we will be doubling up this weekend to get through, I believe, 10 candidates in two shows. So be sure to be following CSM watch if you need help getting through all of the candidates, because it's going to be a really busy pool this year. Um, and there's going to be a lot more news going on, but I can't talk about it yet. So, uh, after all of that vague booking, let's go ahead and start with Plex. Um, Plex has, uh, the interesting piece about Plex, we expected it to rise into the new, new launch because we expected people to want to hoard the Aurum required to buy the extractors. And though I, I think there were some people thinking that more Aurum was going to come from Plex than did, uh, the honest truth is that it's still a hot market. Now, um, CCP has announced for the, for the month of February that we will be seeing a Plex and Aurum sale. And the availability for Aurum is, uh, the deals on Aurum are actually really good right now. And though I am kind of pissed that, uh, the Aurum deals are so much better than the Plex deals, uh, the daylight between them is pretty wide. Um, the opportunity to cash in, as it were, is really excellent at the moment. Uh, at the time of this recording, and I don't know how long this is going to stay, Extractor, if you went ahead and spent $100 on Aurum through CCP, you would be able to get a pretty, you'd be able to cash in on Extractors for two extra billion esque right off the top, instead of going through the Plex route you, and getting something like 7.8 or 7.9 uh, billion-esque, depending on the time of day, um, you'd be getting a little over 9 uh, through extractors. Now, I don't know if that's going to stick. Uh, there's going to be a lot of free extractors, big air quotes around that for free, extractors coming into the game through other offers, so I, I don't want to tell you guys to just go blow all your money on that. The Plex market is is going to be very thriving for the next week. We did get above 1.25 billion uh but uh look like looks like we're on the way down. The volume traded though is absolutely outstanding where we usually see uh 4 to 5,000, excuse me, 2 to 4,000 traded a day. Uh, we've been seeing 14,000 traded in the last two days, which is just amazing. It, it, it really, uh, pales in comparison. Um, if we look at the one year view, it even washes out for the one year view that, uh, 
a week's worth of Plex trading had happened in a day. So expect things to be extremely volatile with that kind of uh, volume running around. Um, if we look at the RMT tokens, I have included the skill extractor normalized to 800 RM, which is the best deal. Uh, if that moves or changes, we will adjust this in post. I'm not exactly sure how yet. Um, it's also interesting to see that uh, multiple pilot training certificates peaked out to 1.5 billion. Um, this may have been a shortage on the market where people who would have usually put their RM into uh, multiple pilot training certificates had pulled out and left this left a gap in the market. I should have included the zoom in, but I did not. Um, but we're seeing skill extractors stay on par with uh, plexes in the short term. So uh, things look healthy at 800. I think that's a that's a decent way to eval to evaluate them if you want to just do napkin math. Uh, so far, 800 seems to be a pretty decent sticking point. If we zoom into Plex, um, again, for as much trade as we are seeing, the actual number available is staying extremely healthy. So for, for having 10, not sorry, uh, for having 5x the volume, we are seeing the supply and demand elsewhere in the market, in the regular market, just stay locked. Now, I am missing 24 hours worth of data here. There was bugs with the Crest feeds and that, that had to be zeroed out. So the opportunity here is that, uh, again, the trend, trend seems to be down and, uh, I hope you guys got to sell at 1.3. I think we're going to stay steady at 125. I have a hard time believing we're really going to walk all the way down to, back down to 120 during this sale. I think there's enough other things dragging up the price of Plex to keep us tied to 125 over over uh february and then if we zoom into the other markets um we see the the thing that interested me and, and this is gonna be a little hard to see uh without it being at super resolution so my bad on this one um is that we keep seeing this lag in rens which is uh unusual and and the volumes probably just paltry but we keep seeing it overshoot and then lag behind uh by a good four hours uh the the actual jita line and as the jita line goes back up again we see it overshoot again and this is this is an interesting trend that somebody i'm sure can make a couple of bucks off of i don't know if this will hold for more than the next week or so but the trend is very very interesting Moving on to minerals. Minerals are extremely interesting this week. Um, Tritanium had been nice and solid right around 6.4, and we saw some instability the last week, and it has plunged. We have gone from 6.4 to almost 6.2 in the, in the order of a couple of days. And if we look, we're seeing a huge spike in supply, um, coupled with a dip in demand. Um, it looks like... Uh, some buy order price, uh, some buy order supply might have, uh, evaporated. Um, not really sure what's going on here. Actually, no, I, I, I changed my mind on that. The, what's probably happening is a lot more titanium is coming to market. And we're seeing that the supply has almost doubled. We've gone from 10 billion, uh, order units on the market up to just over 20 billion on the market and those are getting absorbed by buy orders which are falling and there's a lot of competition to sell now we have bounced off of the 6.1 uh mark to get just above 6.2 again but if we continue to have 20 18 to 20 million unit 20 billion units on the market i think we're going to continue to see the trend down to 6.0 uh, in the upcoming days. And another case, what it might have been is that, uh, people liquidating positions that they've been holding so they can go get in the brain goo market. That might have been what's going on. Um, I have a hard time really swallowing that because the idea of, of people sitting on a billion units of trit just sort of melts my brain. But 
the that might be what's going on here, even though I would have thought that liquidation would have started earlier rather than uh dropping it all right before right right after the patch similarly we're looking at pyrite um a, a similar trend we saw it down the last few weeks and the volume very strong uh again we're seeing that spike in supply and uh the burnout of demand of uh, those buy orders getting filled by uh standing stocks not as dramatic this time we've moved from 5 billion units to 7.5 billion units so that's not that big a that's not that big a rise but that's some serious downward pressure in minerals so this would be a great chance to be buying in uh if you're not playing in the brain meat market which again i'm expecting prices to fall so i haven't bought in yet um take that as you will there are still plenty of people making plenty of money uh playing that market and if you want to be a seller right now is amazing to be selling in the brain meat market but the other markets that are that are easy cash are falling fast and would be a great chance to buy in and wait for the rebound mexalon again we're down under the 60 mark and again the volumes are pretty hot Isogen continues its slide, but uh, I had been complaining for a few weeks that I'd had a hard time predicting the floor of this, and it looks like we're actually close to the floor. That that 100 really does look like the floor. We haven't seen volume spike up uh, again to the 2 billion mark. We've uh, stayed pretty healthy at the 1 billion units mark, and uh, that, I think, is pretty decent um a, a a pretty decent place to to call the call the ceiling again the same thing that's going on in the other mineral markets where uh supply is getting liquidated could drop this down uh, another couple of points but the 100 million mark uh excuse me the 100 100 isk mark i think is going to be the standard price so Keep a close eye on this. I don't know if we're going to see a rise anytime soon, uh, but buying in ahead of Citadel might not be a terrible investment. It'll just be not great. Uh, moving on to Noxium. Noxium is again doing things weird uh, that are not, Noxium's not moving the same way I expect it to. We had been on a downward pace towards 760, excuse me, down towards 460. And uh, that looks like a decent steady state, staying at 460, expecting uh, supplies from NullSec to hold it there. But uh, if we do the zoom in again, we're seeing a little bit of shortage. I think the, the price spike is, is more manipulation than reality at the moment. Um, we're seeing healthy volumes in the 150 million mark. The volumes on the market don't really reflect the actual price of the thing. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. I think the price is high. If you have Noxium, now's a great time to sell it. Uh, but I think this party is going to be over in the next day or two. So get out by the weekend. Zydrine has been the, the uh, weird darling we've been tracking for a month now. And uh, it went on a tear last week up to 1200 and then popped down to 1050. So I hope people were watching that and got on that because I missed I missed the floor on that one. But if we again zoom in, we're seeing that uh, stockpiles are running low. And I'm not sure who's holding on to all the Zydrine. Uh, I don't know where it's going. I, I would have sold out by now. Uh, being at 1.1k or 1.5k, seems like a really great price to be selling at but we keep seeing uh shortages here where now we're under a hundred million units on the market which is uh cut in half from 30 days ago um this is extremely strange behavior and i don't know where that shortage is really coming from because this is this is extremely abnormal i would expect uh i i would expect the supply to stay over the 100 million mark, but I don't know where it's all going and why miners haven't come in to uh, to cash in on this particular cow. 
Um, and Megasite is showing a little bit of strength. We saw a big spike in, in sales uh, right on patch day. Again, probably people liquidating their positions to get onto the brain meat market. We're seeing, yeah, that, that it looks like a big sell-off uh, that that happened to do that, and the zoom-in's a little bit weird at the moment. Um, again, we're at pretty short on stocks at the moment, so if you can sell, I would sell. Um, but I would expect supplies to get back to the 100 million mark pretty quickly, like by the time we're done talking on this show. And last, if we look at Morphite, Morphite is tracking down. Again, the same behavior we've been talking about on all the other minerals. Um, looks like uh, a sellout. Again, the supplies have risen and the prices have fallen. Um, not that big a move. So again, this, is, this would be a pretty decent place to be buying in. I would put buy orders in at 10.5k or maybe all the way down at 10K if you're particularly uh, brave. Um, stocking up on Morphite at 10K I think is a pretty decent investment. Um, once it bounces back to 11K, you've made 10%, so uh, not, a, not a bad way to spend some cash. Not as great as skill trading, but uh, this might be the tortoise for the uh, skill trading's hair at the moment. And then zoomed in, the trends seem to be holding, again, Isogen down, Megasite up, Zydrine up, and Noxium was trending down, trending back up. Moving on to Fuel. Fuel was very interesting this week because uh, they announced some more information about the fuel blocks for Citadels. Um, nitrogen just keeps on trucking up. We're over the 950 mark rather stably at the moment. Um, all the other isotopes are staying stable at their previous spots at 750 and 700, respectively. Um, fuel blocks, we see a blip in the Mimitar fuel blocks, uh, which I'm sure will have crashed by the time the show is done, uh, by the time this actually hits YouTube, so I wouldn't uh, put any credence in that. And again, if we zoom in on nitrogen, the shortage looks to be ending at the moment. And this, again, could be people liquidating stock with the skill trading release. Um, we're seeing the the supply creep up off the 100 million mark. We'll see if this sustains for more than the next week. Um, I'll be putting out graphs on this if things change. Uh, this one will be a pretty interesting one to be watching over the next 7 to 10 days. Um, but as prices go below 900, I think nitrogen is starting to look like a buy. Um, I still would have a target buy price of 850 or less um, because I think that's going to be the steady state once uh, once we hit the alchemy information. Um, but that's a weird bet to be making. Uh, if you need nitrogen, getting it at 850 or 875 is a great deal considering you've been paying over 900 for over a month. So that would be a great chance to be stocking up. Strontium. Strontium is weird. Uh, strontium was announced. Uh, they, they're rebalancing the strontium demand because as POS go away, they still want to have strontium use, uh, a baseline strontium use. And that means that they wanted to add it to the fuel blocks for services at, um, at Citadels. And the, I don't know if the exact quantities were announced, but the market went nuts about the dev blog and bought up every single unit <laughs> available. Now, if you're the idiot who bought at uh, uh, 2.5K, I feel sorry for you. I don't think we're going to get above 1,400, and I think that's, the, I think that's a really um, liberal uh, idea. Strong Team is weird, and it's not as responsive as people think it is. I think there's a lot more supply out there of just strontium sitting at the back of of hangers at the moment. It's it's more of a byproduct of mining than uh, the rest of the stuff. The you don't you don't mine the strontium ore so much. You don't care about the one or two stront you're getting from uh, the ice blocks, and it just isn't consumed in very high quantities. Now I had expected 
when Entosis was was rolling up and when uh the Aegisov was was getting released, that we'd see a huge spike in strontium because people would have to stock up and it'd have to be everywhere, and so those latent uh stockpiles would finally see some use. And we just didn't see it. We saw a slight blip uh ahead of it, but we didn't actually see a sustained price increase. Uh, holding us over the about 600 per unit price we were at. Um, this new update does mean that we'll consume more strontium, but I think this moves the steady state closer to 1k than it does to 2k. I think that we're going to see the price maybe rise up to about the 1200 mark. And again, if you got bought in, this is a great chance to sell out. Uh, if you were just looking to liquidate uh, random strontium that you have lying around, I would hold off. I think there might be some more upward momentum in the next week or two, but I would keep an eye on the market for the next 10 or 15 days uh, looking for a chance to sell over 1,000. Uh, any chance you can get for over 1,000 I think is a good price uh, for for the fact that you've just been sitting on Strant forever and ever. Now, I, I might be biased seeing as I've managed way too many passes in my time. Uh, so I have a truckload of Strant that just sits around and doesn't do anything. Um, but I'm waiting for a thousand. I think you should wait for a thousand. I don't know if we're going to hit a thousand. We're only at about 800 in game right this second. Moving on to outliers. Uh, we're going to start where we usually do on advanced materials. Uh, we saw fermionic condensates take a big spike up, but I don't know. I don't think that's going to be sustained. Um, same on fullerides. Looks like somebody was just buying out to, uh, fill a stock, to fill stock. And, uh, we're coming back down to the steady states those were at. Uh, we're seeing ceramic fibers turn around. So this again would be a decent chance to buy in, but I wouldn't be holding my breath, uh, for using it in the next two weeks. I don't know if there's a bunch to invest in right now, given that the hot thing is skill trading and minerals are a much better place to put a lot more money. Moving on to PI, uh, keep looking at the PI fours. We are seeing, I had thought last week, so last week I had said that if you missed your chance to buy in, it was starting to look like there were some chances to buy in on a few of these products, like the integrity response drones and the wetware mainframes. And, the prices then fell a little further. Now, at the 2 million mark, I'd be putting a target to buy in at 2 million. I think that's a decent price on both of those items, uh, given, given their usage and availability. But trying to get more than 20, uh, 25, excuse me, 2.5 million out of them, I think is going to be tough to do. Um, I still think it's a decent spot for PI manufacturers. Um, I still think that we're going to see a shortage when citadels hit, but the more time we see between the actual release of citadels, the less action we're going to get to see because more the the secret will be spoiled to more people. So yeah, I think it's a decent spot to buy in and speculate. I don't think it's a great opportunity at the moment. Um, again, we might be seeing where people have sold off stockpiles to buy into new positions, that would be the place to be buying in uh, for PI as a as a counter investment. We still haven't heard any rumors about the act actual release date of um, of Citadel yet, and though no one has changed their tune from spring, we're running out of spring. I would hope that CCP uh, releases. Citadels ahead of uh, FanFest because that would mean they could talk about things that aren't Citadels uh, at FanFest and be like, you like Citadels, right? Well, now here are the next things in that structure line. And oh, look, we're going to go actually let you make stations and blah, 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 blah. And if they don't release Citadel in time, that'll make it'll make it hard to talk about those things. We'll see. I'm not CCP. I'm not exactly sure what's going on yet. I, I haven't heard any, any more news than anybody else, so we will keep an eye on it. 
Moving on to bombers, uh, the Manticore is on a tear. It looks like somebody was buying out a whole bunch of them. Um, again, I'm not seeing it sustained. We're seeing the Manticore and the Nemesis tracking up, but we're not seeing any any new heat in the Hound or the Purifier. So um, I think this is just a localized spike, uh, perhaps a shortage. Um, so I, I don't think this is this is indicative of warfare, like I had been saying. And if we look at interceptors like we had the last few weeks, we see the heat in the Crusader has died down, the Claw and the Crow are down, and the Tyrannus is up slightly, but I don't think it's going to stay up. So, um, again, things look really stable here. It doesn't look like anybody is going to war at the moment. Moving on to other ships, we have the Redeemer. Uh, we saw it peak at just over a billion, uh, hitting the 1.1 billion mark. And it has since uh, fallen off that spot. I believe this is a black ops is what, what we're looking at. Um, I don't know if there may... That looks like the sort of thing that there was a cool YouTube video with uh, Redeemers in it. And then uh, the demand died out again. Um, at the sub... If you can get them sub 900 million, this would be a great chance to buy in. Um, I don't know if that if that's going to be... If that's going to hold, and I don't know if that's a good investment, but if you wanted a Redeemer, that's a chance to go get one. Next, if we look at recons, um, the Arazu is tracking down, but with the new announcement in uh, in webs and in scrams and, and, and in points, I think the Arazu is going to be an interesting place to park some money. Uh, it might be too late. Like, I, I don't know if you're listening to this live, I would open up the market. And if you can get in under a hundred and hundred and eighty million, I think is the mark we're at now. 175 million is the mark I have on the graph. Um, if you can get in under that 180 million mark, um, this would be a great chance to stock up a few and, uh, hold on to them. Now, the Arazu does need more CPU. It is starving for CPU. Um, but it's a good chance with the new, with the new scrams to go, uh, have the, have it on your sexy equipment. It would also be a good idea to look at your Proteuses with the heavy, heavy, um, web setup. There's a particular one I'm a fan of that, uh, never got a chance to fly, but, uh, is beefy and mean and, uh, holds things down real bad. So, uh, Arazu is going to be an interesting one to look at. Next, the Falcon had tracked down, and uh, I think it's going to track down a little further with the announced ECCM changes. So, uh, if you're bought into Falcons, I would sell. Like, right now, pause the show, go and go and sell. I, I think it's going to lose a little bit of effectiveness with the sensor, sensor booster uh, boost that we're seeing. Um, the, it still has use and it's still going to be strong, but those other ECM boats, uh, might see a little less rotation now that countering them is just a little bit easier. Moving on to the EOS. This was, I believe I brought it up last week, uh, as spiking up and it has fallen, but it hasn't as fallen as far as I was expecting. I was expecting it to come back down under the 320 million mark. Uh, back to its steady state before the rise, um, especially since uh, this was sort of a response to the command ship skill changes. The thing is, is that I think people may have already talked themselves into a position and uh, bought in and just haven't had a chance to sell out yet. So prices are staying high. I wouldn't produce them still. Uh, because again, the volume sold every day is about 10. Uh, but the prices are pretty high at the moment. I would hold off if you were looking on stocking up on EOSs. The Demos is an, is the next ship on our list and, uh, looks like it's gaining popularity and increasing in price. Um, this looks a little like an adjustment in, um, drop rates, but it might not be. Uh, this one's a little bit hard to actually pinpoint what's going on. I haven't had a chance to... No, Demos isn't a, isn't a faction ship. Fucking hell. Um, volumes are up slightly. Prices are up slightly. But I expect producers to dogpile on that 
uh, pretty quickly. So if you were building, you want to be out of that position by the weekend. Um, I expect prices to come back down, but I haven't seen exactly where the demos are actually going into yet. So uh, keep a close eye on that if you are a fan of heavy assault cruisers. Next, if you have Kaldari Faction Warfare loyalty points, now is the time to cash out. Uh, Kaldari Navy Hookbill is on the rise and several other very popular uh, Kaldari Navy uh, swag items are, are high, on the, high on the horse at the moment and is a great chance to go liquidate some of that uh, LP you might have sticking around. Um, I expect this to not last very long, so I'd want to be sold out by the weekend. Um, I expect, again, as soon as, as soon as things look good for Faction Warfare, I expect them to just dogpile on it and, and kill it. Uh, we also see a similar spike in the Drake Navy issue, uh, increasing from 200 million to 240 million. Um, again, this is a great chance to be, to cash out some of those points, uh, put some cash in your pocket and jump in the skill, the skill thing at the moment. Um, the, the prices are high and they look like they'll stay high into the weekend. Uh, another interesting one on the spike list is the Kaldari Navy cloaking device, which, uh, is at 35 million, I believe. And, uh, again, if you're, if you're kidding out that redeemer, uh, having a meta cloaking device on there is not a bad thing to have. So, um, cashing out those loyalty points is a good time. It's a good time to be Kaldari is, is what I'm trying to say. And on to the last section of the show where we look and see how bad my predictions are. Um, we're going to keep this one brief this week. We're just going to zoom in on the, on the jump freighter picture. We saw the Anshar tracking up, up to, uh, 7.5 billion and uh, the prices continue to stay high. I really should have included the obelisk again this week, but uh, I didn't get a chance to didn't get a chance to to pull it this week. Nomad and Rhea are are staying. Uh, the Rhea is actually the interesting one is that it keeps tracking down, um, and this might be because the uh, fuel for it is getting so expensive that the Anshar is looking like a good replacement, seeing as it's the second largest uh, jump freighter. So. If you're, it, it's hard to be a producer in jump freighters because they take so long to cook. So you're just sort of at the will of the market, but, uh, prices are high and they should stay high another week. It looks like at this rate. And with that, we're going to go ahead and end the show. I've been your host, Lock Fox, and you've been watching the Eve Prosper Market Show. Uh, if you want to follow the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. We're live on Twitch and YouTube every Friday at 0300 Game Time. That's Thursday night U.S. And if you want to support the show, the best way to do so is on our Patreon at patreon.com slash eveprosper. Uh, we provide this show free of charge, without any gates, without any ads, uh, and we can do that thanks to our patrons. So if you can give, we would really appreciate it. Otherwise, feel free to follow and subscribe to the show and the YouTube as much as possible. So, And if you want to interact with us off the air, the best place to do so is on the TweetFleet Slack. Information to join is down in the doobly-doo below. Uh, again, I've been your host, Lock Fox. This has been the Eve Prosper Market Show, and we will be back next week with more delicious graph porn.